It's not long before we reach the clearing where I planned to set up camp. It's just how I left it, not a twig out of place. I head straight to the tree stump where my backpack sits and motion for Eyeless to sit on the stump. She does so. Cerise follows and stands behind her, her expression aloof. Do you always have to be breathing down my neck? Hey, I'm just here for the food. They're at it again already? What are they, dogs? I heave a sigh. Where's the stick when you need one? <laughs> Behave. The two give me a strange look. I pay them no mind and bend down to remove my supplies from my backpack. My homemade salve is the first thing I take out, along with the bandage. The salve is made from a recipe my mother taught me. She was a great herbalist and practically taught me everything I know. Without her knowledge or her love, who knows where I'd be right now. Dead in a ditch. This time, the two... <laughs> this time around, the two girls give me a wide-eyed stare as if I'm an axe murderer disguised as a harmless girl. Maybe I should stop talking to myself in front of them. It's strange, but the strangest thing is the only... The thing is, it's only something I do when other people are around. It's a bad habit to do when <laughs> other people are around. A little bit, yeah. Oh boy. <clears throat> I hope you're referring to our dinner. Eilish shuffles away from me. I ignore it in Cerise's comment. Let's just get this over with. I make quick work of opening the self tin, and Eilish flinches. With a sigh, I take Eilis's wrist in my hand. Worry creases her flawless features. Hold still. Wait, are you sure that's safe? It's safe. I made it myself. Does she really think I'd poison her or something? I'm not that much of a bad person. To prove this, I rub some of the salve on my own wrist. She relaxes in my grasp and doesn't seem so far away from me anymore. Finally, she allows me to rub the salve onto her injured wrist. She winces, and I try to be more gentle. You did... how? She sounds impressed, but her face gives nothing away. Cerise, on the other hand, looks bored with our conversation. I'm a trained herbalist. With the use of plants, I can make all kinds of stuff like this. Wow, you're pretty smart for a little girl. Cerise chimes in. She, wasn't er, she was listening after all. Little girl? I'm 18. Yikes, you're old. No wonder you act like Boo Boo. How old are the two of you? Four years young. Four years? They were probably born on a leap year. <laughs> that would be a good excuse. Yeah. Eilis steps on Cerise's foot once again. This will be a reoccurring thing, I can just tell. Ow! Will you cut that out? What she means is, a lady never reveals her age. Was that meant to be some kind of joke? Cerise sounded pretty serious, though. Whatever, I don't care. The two of them sure act like four-year-olds, so it wouldn't be a surprise to me. I'm finished with the solve. Next up is the bandage. I take the bandage and wrap it around Eilis's wrist, making sure it's tight before releasing her warm hand. Eilis reverts her eyes and stares down at her now bandaged wrist. Take it easy and don't try anything reckless with it for a while. Thank you. My face flushes and I give her a curt nod before turning my back to them. People thanking me usually causes me to feel some kind of small happiness. It's one of the things that I love about being a herbalist, so this isn't unusual. But something feels different this time. I can't explain it. You've got a crush. Yeah, really. Ugh. Now that's done. Where's the food? Glad for the change in subject, I ignore Cerise's bossiness and take out a bundle wrapped in cloth from my backpack. Cerise's eyes light up and she jumps at me like a hungry puppy dog. I put my hand out to stop her advancement. Wait. She point pouts at me, but takes a step back, and I proceed to open up the bundle. Inside the bundle is nothing but broken up bits of bread and cheese. It's all I brought with me from the last village I passed through. Cerise's excitement vanishes at the sight. She crosses her arms and pouts at me once again. You call this food? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you prefer bark and leaves instead? <laughs> a small laugh erupts from Isla, surprising me for a moment. She has a nice laugh. Cerise's face goes bright red. She snatches some bread and cheese from my bundle and then walks away from me without another complaint. 
I offer Eyeless some with a wordless gesture, and she takes a modest piece of cheese. Thanks. With haste, I nod and turn away from her, much like the first time she thanked me. Ugh, why am I acting like this over something so small? Cerise takes a seat on the floor and grumpily stuff stuffs her face with her portions of bread and cheese. Meanwhile, Eyeless stays put on the stump and takes graceful bites from her share. On the other hand, I decide to skip dinner. I'm already at low on rations as it is, and we'll need something to eat tomorrow. Wheel? I'm already thinking like I'll be keeping them around. Next I'm going to give them pet names. Lissy and Cece, kill me now. They still haven't gotten around to telling me why they're here in the first place. I decide to bring the topic up again, anything to stop these strange thoughts. So tell me, what are you two doing in a place like this, dressed like that? I thought it was obvious. Ceres, don't say any more. The moon said, I know, I know, but we may as well tell her, Eilis. It's not like she'll believe us anyway. Humans don't believe in magic. They don't have to tell me. It's not like I really care, though I can't help but wonder. What's any of this got to do with magic? The two of them look at me, their expression serious. Eilis always looks serious. But the expression doesn't suit Cerise, as she always looks like she's going to pull uh, some kind of prank on you when you at least expect it. Eilis sighs and looks defeated. She turns to me and takes a deep breath. We come from the night sky, which is our home. All those twinkling stars you see? That's our family. It's freaking huge, right? I bet you can't stay... I bet you can't say you have over a billion siblings. Cerise looks proud of her interruption, and Eilis sends a glare her way. The moon sent us here without our consent. But before that, he told us we need to work together, together to find a human. But not just any human. A human that's our only chance of ever returning home. Long story short, we're trapped here until we can find the human the moon told us about. After their little explanation, the two of them look at me, waiting for my reaction. A million questions run through my mind, but I can't make myself speak or believe any of them. This is ridiculous. I should have half, I should have half the mind to pack up all my things and leave them behind, to forget this whole thing ever happened, right now. Every bone in my body tells me to do so, but I don't. Instead, I look at them. Really look at them. They don't look normal. In fact, I've never seen anyone who looks like them in my entire life. They look like they jumped out of a fairy tale. Perhaps they did. The sky, the moon, stars for siblings. They must be joking, and it ain't funny. Of course, I don't believe them, but that doesn't stop me from being curious. I'll just play along for now and see what happens. Taking a deep breath, I look them in their eyes. Okay, let's say I believe you. Why are you telling me, and what do you expect me to do about it? Wait, 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 wait. So, she doesn't believe them, even though she saw them fall from the sky. <laughs> yep. It's a level of obliviousness that I, like, forced obliviousness that I don't think that I could handle. Although, if this happened to me in real life, I suppose I would feel the same way. Just be <laughs> like, I'm not going insane here, I can't, I, everything is normal. These two guys did not fall out from the sky. Something just happened. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I would do if this happened to me in real life. Probably make out with them? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Of course, I know I'm the one who asked them, but they didn't have to tell me. They could have lied and said they came out from the last village and got lost in the forest. So they must be telling me this wild story because they want my help. Or are they suggesting I'm the one they're looking for? Well, you're a human, obviously. You must know what- you must know where all the humans around here are hiding. Because as far as I can tell, you're the only one in this dump. Sreez, what my idiot accomplice meant to say is, we need your help. Of course. They wouldn't e even be here if they didn't need anything from me. They wouldn't even want to know me. It's no secret that people are only interested in themselves and their own problems. In the end, it's not even 
it's not like I even want them hanging around me. The faster I get rid of them, the better. You're right. You won't find anyone else around here. If you want to find more people, you'll have to travel to Ravel, the town up ahead. That's where I'm heading. That's perfect! You'll take us with you, right? It looks like I don't have much of a choice. You're not so bad for a tiny human. Cerise ruffles my hair and I slap her hand away. She only smiles in response and I feel like slapping her again just to knock the smile off of her face. Thank you, Anair. I've been saying Anair. 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 Eilis sends a warm smile my way, causing my face to flush. It's nothing. Let's go get some sleep for now. We'll head out in the morning. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. The sun's warm rays greet me as I open my eyes to a new day and will myself to get up. I have slept on the forest floor with nothing but my coat to keep me warm. A yawn escapes my mouth. I sit up and my heart almost leaps out of my chest at the sight of them. I'm not alone. It's been a long time since I woke up with someone by my side. Eilis and Cerise are huddled up together asleep on the forest floor. Eilis rests her head on Cerise's chest and Cerise wraps her arms around her. The two of them share the blanket that I lent them last night. They look peaceful. It's an odd sight. A sight I'd never thought I'd see. Not with the way the two were arguing with each other last night. It's too bad I have to wake them. We should get going if we want to make it to Ravel as soon as possible. No, I won't wake them. It's better that I leave them like this. Instead, I'll use this time to prepare us some breakfast. I'm going to need all the energy I can get while having to deal with these two. A short laugh escapes my throat. I feel like a mother who doesn't want to wake her bratty children. A mother who grows more aware of her love for her children when they're asleep and silent. Time to get up. I lift myself off the ground and dust myself off. Then I grab my backpack and put it on. It doesn't feel right leaving it behind. Isla stirs and opens her eyes. My movements must have disturbed her. She sees me with my backpack and jumps to her feet in a panic, knocking Cerise off of her in the process. Cerise wakes up and rubs the sleep from her eyes. Wait! Please don't leave us behind. We'll try our best not to be a burden to you. What? You were just gonna leave us here? Cerise jumps to her feet and stands beside Eilis. They both watch me, waiting to hear my explanation. Guilt washes over me. I wasn't planning on abandoning them, but it's not like they ha I haven't thought about it. Luckily for me, they're not mind readers. I, I was just going to get us some leaves for breakfast. Humans eat leaves? Jeez, you weren't kidding when you offered me some for dinner. Why do they keep referring to me as human? They're human too? Aren't they human too? They certainly look it, but not the ordinary kind. They're extraordinary. I've been doing my best to ignore the strange things they say, though it's getting on my nerves, much like everything else about them. Eilis' manners are the only exception. At least one of them is civil. No, we don't eat leaves. We infuse them in boiling water and drink it. Yuck. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'd like to try it. A smile appears on my lips for Eilis. I don't know why. Perhaps I'm trying to reassure her that I'm not going to abandon them. Last night I said I'd help, even though their story was out of this world. That wasn't a lie. Eilis gives me a shy smile in return, making me flush. Why does she have this effect on me? Because you're gay. <laughs> so gay. It's good. Keep keep going with this. It's good. <laughs> Bang the heart star girls. It's fine. Let's go. The tea won't make itself. One step after another, we venture through the forest. It's a beautiful day. The birds are chirping in the trees and the sun's warmth is shining down on us. To my surprise, Eilis and Cerise have been so quiet, I almost forget that they're trailing behind me. It won't last. Soon enough they'll be at each other's throats once again, and I'll have to stop myself from knocking the two of them out. Deep breaths. Although I say this to myself, both girls take a deep breath behind me. <laughs> 
To test them, I let out a sigh. They sigh in return. That's it. I turn on my heel and glare at the two of them. They glare back at me. What are you doing? Nothing. What's with them? They're four-year-olds indeed. I turn my back on them once again and ignore their childish antics. It's not long until I find a spot that I'm... Um, blah, 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 until I finally spot what I'm looking for. A medium-sized tree with star-shaped leaves stands just up ahead of us. The tree reminds me of Mother and the time we spent together. Mother and I would always gather leaves and make tea together. As a child, I hated tea. Mother made me drink it, though. She said it was good for me, and I believed anything she used to tell me. No matter how bitter the tea tasted, I'd drink it, just to make her happy, to make her proud. That's all that mattered. Now I love this tea. It's the only thing in the world that makes me feel closer to her. My legs run on their own, my memories giving me new energy. I run to the tree and pluck a star-shaped leaf from its branch. A strong scent from the leaf fills my nostrils as I hold it to my nose. The smell is nostalgic. It reminds me of home, or rather, what was once home. Humans sure love their leaves. Cerise's voice catches me by surprise and pulls me back into reality. I hadn't heard them approach. I turn around to see Isla standing in front of me, smiling. Are these the leaves you were talking about? Yes, I just need to pick some and then we can start making the tea. How exciting! What can I do to help? Hello, kitty cat. <laughs> I woke him up. Whoops. She wants to help? I hesitate. It's hard for me to let others help. Usually other people are no help at all. Having others around only produces more work. What if they slack off? What if they do it all wrong? It's hard for me to put my trust in others. This is why group work is a hard thing for me as well. Mm -hmm. Alice appears to notice my hesitation as she looks downcast all of a sudden, the smile fading from her face. Cerise storms up behind her and glares in my direction. We're not useless, you know. You could at least give us something to do when we so we don't die of boredom. Okay, okay. They sure can be pushy when they want to be. Hmm, I think. My mind wandering. <laughs> they watch me in anticipation. They look as if they'll hang on to every word I say next, like children that want nothing more than to please their doting parents. With their eyes glued to me, I set down my backpack and take out a canteen, followed by my fire kit. Then I return my attention back to the overgrown puppies standing in front of me. Eilis, I need you to take this canteen and find us some water. There should be a spring nearby. Eilis looks pleased as I hand her the canteen. She takes it with a sense of pride. I'll do my best. Zoom. <laughs> she says before she dashes off in search of the spring. Her enthusiasm causes me to flush. What about me? With my face now red, I turn my attention back to Cerise and hand her the fire kit. She takes it a little confused, like she's never seen one before. I need you to do the most important part. I need you to build a fire. Cerise's eyes light up with determination. Easy peasy. You're asking the right girl. <laughs> before I can say another word, she runs off, fire kit in hand. I assume she's going to find some kindling for the fire and not set the forest on fire. With the two of them gone, I return to picking the leaves from the tree and place each leaf in my coat pocket with care. Time passes as I'm swept up in the nostalgia of my mundane task. My left coat pocket is filled with leaves by the time I stop and return to real time. I think I pick too many, but extra tea is never a bad thing. Cerise and Eyeless haven't returned. I wonder where they are. Maybe they got into trouble, or maybe they got lost again. What if... My thoughts halt and I pull myself together. Why am I so worried? They said they could take care of themselves, but I don't think I believe them. They need someone. Someone to guide them. Maybe I should... The sound of rustling bushes fills my ears. I expect to see some kind of wild animal jump out of it. Or perhaps Cerise. <laughs> Instead, it's Eyeless who appears from the bush. She holds my canteen with a proud look on her face. Cerise follows just behind her, kindling in hand, so I wasn't too far off the mark. <laughs> I smile. It appears they can handle themselves after all. Dot dot dot. Dot 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 dot. 